these are tips for Word Project 2. When you look at number three, it's asking us to change the theme to depth. You may not have this available to you. Don't worry, I'm going to go through the, the grade book and I'm going to look to see if anybody missed those points, which is just a half a point, and I will add that manually. But here's all your different themes. These are just pre-designed with font styles and colors. Um, I don't have it available either, but it does ask you to change the theme colors to blue, green, and you should have that available to you. Number four, it's asking us to change all our margins. So if you go to the layout tab and you click on the margins drop down list, you can see there's some that's pre named and pre designed. The normal would have everything set to one inch. But if you need to customize it, you want to go down to the bottom and you click on that and it'll open up the page setup dialog box. But if you notice, here's the page setup group, and this will also launch that same box. And when it comes to setting the 0.75, you won't be able to use the spin handles here. You actually have to type 0.75. And you can either press enter or click out of it. And then when you select OK, it will automatically an update. For number five, when it's asking us to select the entire document, I have to always position myself at the beginning of the document. You can either do this mainly with your mouse pointer or if you're anywhere in the middle of your document and use your keyboard, you can press Control and the Home key and it will automatically position you at the beginning. And I always select Control A and that will select my entire document because they do want you to change the entire document's font size to 11. For number six, it's asking us to apply this Heading 1 style and then it wants us to open up this font dialog box so we can apply this particular effect, which is all caps and change the font size to 18. And we're doing this just to the title of the document. Um, so let's take a look at that and then I'm gonna show you this bottom border. This is all number six. So for the styles, if you're on the home tab, you'll see this is the styles group. And then you can see this bottom arrow here. This will open up your entire gallery. And you can see I've already applied the heading too. So the bottom piece is the name of the style. And what they did is they pre-designed a bunch of formatting, applied it, and then gave it a name. So you can see the fourth one over is considered heading two. Now the other thing they want you to do is um, open up the font dialog box. Remember that's the font group and you go to the right and this arrow will launch the dialog box. This is considered a dialog box. And you can see in the upper left hand corner what it's named at, so it's font. And they want you to change it to the 18 point and then the effects down below, they want you to turn on these all caps. Now the next thing is your borders. And again, you can see I already applied it. So again, I just keep this highlighted and then the paragraph group, you can see this here is in a drop down list of all your different borders. So they want a bottom border applied. But if I wanted to open up the dialog box, I go to the very bottom, it's borders and shading. And this is more advanced options, which you will work with because there's all these different lines and you can change the color of the line and you can also change the thickness of the line. Once you, we'll, we'll get into that, but I just want you to know what that is. But for now, all you're doing is applying the bottom border. Now for number seven, we're going to apply this heading two style to everything that's in bold, which I've done here. You can see everything that was in bold is now a heading two has been applied. Now it's also asking us to highlight this emergency telephone, this line. And then if you notice, it's asking us to select it. And we're going to change the paragraph spacing before 12 point and after three point. And then we're going to apply this um, font effect, which is small caps. Once we apply this, then we want to update our heading two style to reflect these three changes, 12 point, three point, and small caps. So this is what I'm going to show you now. Now there may be other methods to this, but what I'm going to do is just right click over top of the heading two, and I'm going to select modify. When I do that, I'm going to go down to the bare bottom left hand corner and I'm going to select format. When I select format, I'm going to first handle the small caps. So I'll just click on font. And then I'll go ahead and turn on the small caps and I'll select OK. So I took care of that part. Now I'm going to go back to that same button and this time I'm going to select paragraphs. And that way I can handle the spacing. It said before it wanted it at 12. So I apply that and then after, and I have to type this one. So three point and I press enter and it made that change and I select OK. And now it's been updated. So every 
style that has heading two applied should have those updates applied to it. So again, you want to right click over top of it, select modify, and you're going to be focused down here on the format. And that's how you're going to modify that style. Next, when you're deleting all the blank paragraphs, they want you to click on the show hide button. And once it's on, you can see these characters like here's a blank line. It just means when there's that paragraph mark and there's no text that follows it. So I'm just going to delete that out. Every time I see one of those, I'll go ahead and delete these blank lines out. Next, they want us to just change this bolded list. So I'm just going to highlight all three of these lines. And I'm going to go over, instead of clicking on the, the bullets, I'm going to go over here to the next option, numbering, and just click on it and it'll automatically update. When you go to apply the bullets, you just want to highlight the text so the system knows where to apply those bullets. And again, you're on the home tab, the paragraph group, and here's your command button. You just want to click on the button and it'll automatically um, apply those bullets. It's not asking you to apply a particular style. So you may do that in one of these projects, but not for this particular question. Sorry, I said bullets. I'm, I meant numbering. The instructions want, instructions want you to apply numbering. Remember, the paragraph dialog box, when it's asking you to open that up, just make sure that you're launching to open up the dialog box. When you go to apply this change to the other numberings um, that you applied, if, if you have a hard time with your format painter, you're more than welcome just to keep doing it manually one by one. That's up to you. You can just go ahead and type the two and the two. And then they're just saying, don't check this box and select OK. So that's up to you. Either way, it's not going to recognize whether you did it this way or if you used a format painter. That's up to you. I didn't have any problems with mine. They all start with a one. But if it didn't, what you need to do is if you click on the arrow alongside of the command and you go all the way down to set numbering value, this is where you can get, you just go ahead, if it's starting at a number two, you just want to get it to start at a one and you select OK and it will adjust itself. If anything shifts like that, here are your command buttons to shift things back over to get it to line back up according to everything else. But if you notice this... I'm going to shift it over to the default to the margin and then you shift it back in position and you can see it will line up with everything else. So you always want to make sure that you're consistent with everything lining up. When you go to customize the bullet list, which is on this is your number 10, it's asking for the windings character code number 7. How you do that is instead of clicking on the bullet, you want the arrow to the right to get that drop down menu. And you go down to the bottom because you're going to define it. And then you're going to click on symbol. And then you're going to scroll down to alphabetically the wingdings. It's what they recommend it. Oops. Let me get down there to the W's. Oops, sorry. Scroll up. So right here, and then once you're in that category, if you go down here for the character code, if you just type in a 70, it automatically highlights that. And if you select OK and OK again, it will insert that customized bullet. I want to ask you to open up the paragraph dialog box. It's just asking you to verify that this left indentation and the hanging is 0.25, which it is. And when you go to use the Format Painter to apply this to these two other sections, just double-click the Format Painter and then click and drag over these areas, these two areas, and it will be applied. And when you do that, make sure to click on the, the Painter again to turn it off. So when you're hovering back over for the next section, you see your mouse pointer is no longer represents a paintbrush. When you highlight this next section, you can open up the dialog box for your indentation, and it's asking for a uh, 0.25 indentation. And then when you're done typing your 0.25, don't forget to include your two before and after spacing, then select OK, and it will update. When you're working on the text for the emergency phone numbers, and it's asking you to open up the paragraph dialog box and making sure your indentation is 0.25 for the left, and your spacing before and after is two point, 
and then you need to go down to the bottom left hand corner to click on tabs and then please over here at the default tab stop don't set your tab stop there you're supposed to position right here and you want it to position so it's stopping at the seven inch mark on your ruler and if your ruler is not on if you go to view there's an option here that you can check the box to turn on your ruler so you want the tab stop to be at seven and it's going to be a right alignment meaning everything will flow to the left we're used to everything aligned at the left and flowing to the right and then it's asking for these leader lines it's these dot dot dots it's hard to see but it's option number three that you want to select and you set it now that it's set it's sitting down here in your box saying okay this is one that's been created so whenever you click on anything they will accumulate down here in this box but you always want to type them up here whenever you're setting them so this one is now set and it's right aligned and it has these leader lines so if i select okay i'm sorry you can see it's dot leader number two so um there's a little error there so i'm just going to go ahead and open this back up to tabs and i'm going to click on the seven and i'm going to change it to the two and select set so now that one has this option has been updated and i select okay and then it's asking for us to position before the numbers itself and then we're going to press tab and you can see how now it's going to apply whenever you press tab it's going to apply that setting that you had just um, set up in that option and if you notice i don't have my show hide button on the entire time sometimes it can be confusing and again when you see these arrows there it just means that you press the tab key and you can always turn that on and off you don't need to keep it on the entire time when you work on the find and replace make sure you're on the home tab and you click on this command replace it'll open up this dialog box and you want to click on the word more to expand it but when you type in phone 911 make sure when you type that call it's all capital letters it is sensitive with the self grading then it's asking you to apply uh, bold formatting so you want to click on format down here in the bottom left corner click on font and then you want to select bold and you select OK and then you want to go ahead and select replace all and it made zero replacement so I must have did something wrong um, I'm not sure exactly what I did but I I went through and I just you know went through my find first to open my navigation to make sure it was there but one thing I've noticed make sure that when you do this find and replace make sure you're at the beginning your blinking cursor is at the beginning of your document and then when you're typing in phone 911 make sure after one you do not press the space bar because you do not want a um, empty white space so just make sure your spelling's correct but um, all the steps I showed you is the correct way of doing that. So I just did find next, replace, find the next one, replace it. You could do that, you know, just to verify that that's what you want to replace, or you can just select replace all, depending on the document you're working on. If you're in the real world, I would always recommend just do find next, replace, look at it one by one to make sure that's what you want to replace it with. Now for number uh, 15, 16, um these last two i need another five minutes of recording time so i'm going to go ahead and stop this one and i'll make a second video to finish these last two